All right, I think we're good. Coming at you a little bit late this week, I apologize. I haven't been feeling super talkative. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Just, I, I think it's just my nature to get into a routine, a good routine for a little while, and then part of me is like, come on, bro, we're getting a little robotic. We got to gotta chill out just a little bit let's let's I don't know so I'd been on the record Wednesday do my shit editing wise Thursday Friday post everything TikTok and all that stuff but this week it just kind of Wednesday oh actually you know what happened actually the reason why it's late I'm just making excuses for my laziness is it's all about self-sabotage at the end of the day is I think, th- but self sabotage is a little bit natural when shit's going kind of good, and you're feeling in a nice rhythm. But this is the truth. I have one light in this apartment. Well, besides the one right behind me, but the overhead lamp, and it burnt out on Monday, I think. And it just took me a couple days to get to the store, and so. I needed that light to shine on my beautiful face to record. And so I, Wednesday I told myself, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go get it this morning. That's what I'll do. And I think I ended up going to the gym, coming home and, uh, didn't do that. Well, I also, I'm on a, a nice, again, another routine of mine. Downloaded a Game Boy emulator and have been playing Pokemon from the Game Boy version. Normally I always end up playing red or blue or yellow, like the old school, the original, the one I grew up on. But I decided to switch it up a little bit and I went with Emerald, which is like Generation 3. And I'm probably just speaking gibberish to most of you out there, but I know someone out there fucks with Pokemon. I love Pokemon. I truly think Pokemon is one of the most creative things of my lifetime, at least. And it's done so well on so many different fucking platforms. Whether video games, it has an app for a phone game, card game. You can collect the cards, you can play the cards, TV show, movies. There's not a lot of things that have had the success that Pokemon has had across a multitude of different mediums and man how dope would it be to have your own pokemon but in a way like cats and dogs are like really shitty pokemon basically so i i get man i know i love it because i can just lose three hours of time just getting on here to the point where like my hand hurts from pressing the keyboard i'm like oh taking me back to 16 year old or probably like 12 year old i don't know every like five years i'd end up playing it again on game boy or i would download it a emulator for my computer and play so the combination of no light and pokemon re-entering my life is why this shit is late so Let's get into it. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Living for a Living, episode 101. Living for a Living, baby. How you doing? (laughs) Boy, 101 Dalmatians for it. It's pretty crazy, dude. I'm still tripping out on that a little bit, but mm, it is what it is, and I almost thought last night, tonight, today is Saturday morning as I'm recording, I thought I was going to go grab a couple beers and then do an old school, I think like 50, 50 episodes ago, I would record on like a Friday night and I'd drink while I recorded. And so sometimes I got a little loose with those ideas and topics and I thought I was going to do that. I walked to the store, bought some beer. And to my surprise, the bars were open. I had to get to the store before 9 p.m. because that's when they stopped serving alcohol here in Finland. So I got there, like left the house at 8.30. And I'm walking through and down the main little street where all the bars are here in Kuopio. And 
bouncers are outside. People are, I mean, the city was alive again. And I thought, damn, I might have to go out. But that, that wasn't the plan for the night. Although the plan was to record, I didn't do that. I ended up playing Pokemon. <laughs> and so, yeah, we're, we're slowly but surely getting back to normal. I think the bars have to close now at midnight. Stop serving alcohol at 11, which is like a half day, you know. I uh, So I might, I might venture on out tonight. I'm not sure. We'll see. But it just felt good. Like you could feel life walking down the streets for the first time in a while. Because around here, the last month or two, it's been pretty dead. Pretty dead. I mean, it just made me think, too, like, thinking about the news and and everything that's going on right now. Do you remember what life was like before COVID? Like, really think about it. Like, what would you think about? What'd you talk about? What was, I mean, this shit, I gotta, I gotta give credit where credit is due. The mental manipulation of this entire psyop that's gone on has been incredibly impressive because I'm incredible. I've been, I've been, uh, influenced completely. I mean, you listen to this show. Every fucking week, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of it's talking about some insanity that's going on. You look at the news. That's all they talk about. It's like, what did the news used to talk about? You know? What? What What did they? They? Like, I was really thinking about it this week. Like, what? Sports? Yeah, okay. But what was, what were the big... And that's the thing, it, it's with the the age that we're in now with clickbait and everything being viral and all these things, everything has to be a big deal. And I feel like the news used to not be that big a deal. It was just the news. Now it's always a death ticker, count kicker, ticker, duh, the next variant. It's like, wh- what happened before all this shit? Really think about it. Even just thinking about life. Like not worrying about, oh, well, this country has that rule. And if I go there and can I go to that restaurant? And like, it's, I feel like in a way we've been men in black with the little silver pen thing where I, my memory of pre COVID, I can remember everything from the first day in Barcelona, or like a couple days leading up to lockdown in Barcelona, I can remember. I was there with my ex, we were moving out of my apartment, and we were on her scooter, driving through the city, and people were fucking crazy, like it was end of the world, kind of apocalyptic type shit, like those memories are super vivid in my head. I can remember a lot of that lockdown, you know, I can remember the last two years really well. But before that, like I, I'll watch, go back and watch some vlogs from Nepal, and I'm like, I did that. Like that's possible. You could travel freely with no second thoughts, and no one would ask you. Well, are you back? Did he? Did you get your test? It's like, oh, it's like seriously. It, it's crazy to me. What what have we, what have we been? It's like scary moving forward because I think this shit is pretty much over. Certain people are just clinging to it because, as I said, I don't think a lot of people remember what life was like before this, and so a lot of people, myself included, a little bit, part of now their identity regards is in regard to either being super scared of what's happening, being uh, against lockdowns, being thinking it's a hoax, you know, whatever whatever little category you fall into, there's this slight identification of 
feeling a certain type of way about what's going on and what's been going on. And so it's kind of like scary. I, I just right before I got on here scrolling through TikTok and there's people still on there on TikTok lives, as I mentioned last episode, debate me's of vaccine, vaccines should be mandatory everywhere. Like there's people still arguing about this, despite the fact that a majority of the countries, a majority of the world, it seems like is slowly, slowly, slowly going towards like, all right, we're done with this shit. You know, it's, it's, and so just to me, I'm like, what? But I get it because those people then are getting attention and that's their little identity is I'm a super pro vaccination guy. I'm an anti guy. I'm a pro freedom. I'm a, uh, uh, uh. it's created these weird little identifications. But, boy, it, it, it's nice kind of at this point because, it, it, as I said, it feels like it's, it's over. It feels, and someone's going to comment on this, well, have you seen the numbers? <laughs> Obviously, you don't know. I mean, look at the statistics, and the cases are outrageous. It's like, uh, nah, I think it's still over, dude. I think we're done. By in two weeks here, life should be normal. The rest of the Nordics, pretty much normal. But it's a good thing now because you get to see who, who, what leaders are and what countries are just fucking power hungry. Because that's another reason. I mean, the news doesn't want it to end because it's just been an easy news cycle. An easy story to constantly talk about. You know, the news lost Trump a couple years ago. That was their golden goose. I know they all say they hate him, but if you were a journalist during that Trump era, you loved it. Your job was as easy as fuck. You just have to say, well, what what little sentence can I talk shit about of he said today? And then that ended. And ushering right into that was all COVID madness. And then again, you just had to fucking talk about that. Talk about some case counts. Talk about death. Masks. What, whatever it may be. That was easy. And so they, I, I get it. They don't want it to end. And same thing then the politicians and people in power who haven't missed a paycheck at all don't want this shit to end either most of them the again you get to see who who's a little bit of a power grubbing i mean power does some crazy shit to you i know for a fact i've seen it personally i've seen it in other people you know i tell the story of our trainer our strength and conditioning coach when i was at new haven who during the off season we didn't have a head coach, so he was kind of the head coach and he was our the main guy in charge. One of my favorite dudes on the planet. Awesome dude. I fucking hated him during that time. We had a lot of piece of shit kids on the team too, so it, I understand his positioning. But I think again, if we talked to him, old Foggy today, he'd say, "Yeah, I think I might have gotten a little power hungry that that couple months." So I get it. I know for myself when I'm in charge of everything on the football team and all this stuff, you look at things a little bit differently. But oh, no, the point I'm trying to tangent into is now we're seeing people's real true colors. Now that it's like, okay, this is essentially a cold now. This is essentially a flu. And I'm not saying it was essentially that two years ago, although it kind of was for 98 percent of the people 99 percent of the people but i know statistics are (laughs) that's not the right science but you just see who who likes the power who's got it Ooh, you know you look at the the democratic states 
in the U.S., although I think I read something that Washington is, Washington State, where I'm from, is getting rid of vax pass and mask mandates soon. I believe I read that, which I'm incredibly happy for, especially my mom. My mom hasn't been a big fan of what all has been going on, which actually like really kind of surprised me in a way. I, f- I felt bad for it because Seattle area is incredibly liberal incredibly brainwashed and democratic and like they think that uh the homeless taking over the city and doing heroin on the sidewalks is a good thing for the city and they think that having to leave your car unlocked so that people won't smash your window to break in and steal stuff is a good thing and so i felt bad for my mom when in all of her little friend circle and everything is just the cream of the crop in terms of just believing what the TV tells them to believe. And so I felt bad for her, but then it's been ironic because if you would have told me five years ago that this would happen and then it would be my mom to go quote unquote conspiracy theory and be against all the stuff that the TV's saying and it would be my dad and my dad hasn't like he doesn't believe everything, but he definitely is a more on the on the mainstream side, I think. Well, I don't know. Because he's a Fox News guy. I don't know. Yeah, my dad's a, a weird case study. But in this case study, if you would have told me that it would have been my mom more on the fuck with the TV saying and my dad more like, well, I, I, I just think it's that's how it, they're doing the right thing. I would have bet a lot of money that wouldn't have been the case. I would have thought it would have been flip-flop because all my life growing up, my mom was always like, well, I saw on TV that, you know, if you walk alone, there's going to be a van that pulls up and kidnaps you. That's what used to be on the news. Pedophilia. They used to actually be concerned about pedophilia on television and the news. (laughs) <laughs> They're not anymore. You know why? Because all the powerful motherfuckers are doing it. That's why. I mean, old Maxwell, we didn't hear a peep out of that. Anybody get named? No. You even know what happened? No. Arguably the biggest sex trafficking ring in the history ever. Any clue? Nah. Rogan said the N-word 30 times over the last 10 years. That's what we got to care about. It's like, boy. So now it's just, I think it's, it's getting, it's, it's ending, it's ending, you know, I think the democratic states will take a little while, but shit, you go to Florida, Florida been open this whole time. I told, I tell everybody if I ever move back to the States permanently, which actually is more of a possible idea. I don't know, actually. For the longest time, I told myself, like, I probably will never live in the U.S. permanently again. And uh, I don't know. I haven't thought about this too much. This is just total talking on the top of my head. But if I ever did move back to the States right now, if it was this moment in time, man, I'd be in Florida. Florida. Florida is a good spot, dude. I enjoyed I lived there for like three months. Mm-hmm. Just a bunch of fucking weirdos out there, man. But you see, Canada, who, I don't know if, it's like Canada has just taken a page out of all of the shitty American things playbook. Canada's really, you know, Canada's always been our kind of little brother and had this like little brother syndrome to the States, where if, you know, you told if you met a Canadian abroad and asked him if they were American, they'd get offended by it because no, I'm not, I'm not his brother. I'm my own thing. Just like a little brother would, you know, whereas when I'm abroad and people mistake me for Canadian, that's a nice compliment. Although nowadays it might be shifting, dude, it might be shifting because have you seen some of these clips of the Canadian cops, you could have swore they were American cops. 
So, I mean, this shit that's going on in Ottawa with the trucker protest and Trudeau just came out and said that anybody who supports them, you can they can seize their bank accounts or 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 freeze them, I mean. Again, I'm I get my news 140 characters at a time on Twitter, so don't quote me on any of this shit. Although I'm going to have my buddy Robin on um, the podcast. We did an episode last year around this time. He's a Canadian dude, music artist. I'd say free thinker, interesting dude. We don't agree on everything, but he at least, we have some good conversation because there's a lot of thought behind what he thinks. Not necessarily just a, a drone regurgitating shit, but I'm going to have him on, we're going to do that on Tuesday. That's what, That's been one of my favorite random people that I've met through this whole podcast world thing. And so we're going to talk, I'm going to save my Canadian ignorance for him because we're going to talk about that. It, it just sounds wild and it's just funny. I don't mean funny like ha ha. It's just, I don't know. I guess I sometimes enjoy seeing people get a taste of their own medicine. You know, maybe that's cynical. Maybe that's, maybe I'm a dickhead for that. I don't know. But there's something fulfilling in seeing someone get a little taste of their own medicine. And so in countries like Canada and other countries that kind of always talk shit about the U.S., but I'll use Canada for the example right now. To see them kind of experience some fucked up by their government and disagreeing with their government and thinking, oh, this our prime minister is the worst and, and not being proud of where they're from because all of those emotions, all of those thoughts and feelings and sayings, Americans, a lot of Americans have had throughout the years. And it's always been kind of the joke of Canadian, well, you know, our government. And I mean, I get it here in Finland of like, that's why even seeing some of the outrage, this, the very quiet and polite outrage here in Finland over how it's gone the last few months has been weirdly self-serving because it's like, aha. You get it. And it's, you know, you you love to, to poke the fun at the American system when it's like that, which it totally is. I'm not defending it at all. But just know it can happen to you too. And so, no, it's, it's I don't know. With all that said, I think we're, we're getting through the clear. It just seems... Canada, Italy, I think Australia, New Zealand's still pretty fucking insane. Um, But then Nordics, Republican states, I think Slavs, Slavic Slavic countries are kind of up and down. Poland never really gave a fuck about it in general. I remember when I was driving through there and I stopped at my buddy's house and I was like, bro, is there any um, mandates or I got to wear a mask in the store or whatever? And my best Polish friend was like, bro, we are still third world in our minds. We don't give a fuck about this. (laughs) I said, all right, cool, cool. I think Czech Republic was super systemic about everything. They kind of followed the rules even though they didn't agree. But even Czech Republic's like, nah, no more back pass. No more, like, nah, we're good. You know, Mexico never shut down. All the, like, South American places that are ran by the cartels, they didn't shut down because cartels need that business, boy. Well, the funniest one, though, is Austria. I guess that um, Austria has announced they're going to lift all restrictions in March. And literally three weeks ago, four a month ago, they were saying you... It's mandated to have the shot, and if you don't, you can be charged $3,600 up to four times a year if you get caught not having it, 
and I just heard this from my Austrian friend. They were saying they were going to go around house to house and take people's blood to see if they had it. So from literal SS army, door to door knocking to, ah, all mandates are done (laughs) in a month. Funny how things can change, how fast things can change, but that's also, that shit's a two-way street boy. It can go from the SS coming to take your blood to everything being open in a month to, guess what? By end of April, that SS is fucking knocking on the doors again. So, no, I, I think, but no, honestly, again, for the 37th time, I think we're almost through it. And the main reason then to think this is, as I've said, they had Trump, and I'm speaking American media-wise, but in a way, American media, we have a little place in the world media. I mean, America, pop culture, that's our culture. Everyone wants to say Americans don't have culture. Bitch, you're watching all our Netflix shows. You're listening to... 90% 90% American artists, music artists. Like, movies? I bet seven out of the last ten movies you've seen were American. Bitch, you like our pop culture. We run the pop culture game. Facebook? What was that? Oh, yeah, that's American. Instagram? You use that? Oh, yeah, that's American. Twitter? You use that? Oh, yeah, that's American. TikTok, you use that? Nope, that's Chinese, but China's gonna China's next. Just wait, just wait. Uh, but no, as I is it was Trump. God, I'm feeling funny today. <laughs> it was Trump for four years. That was the easy media thing. Then it's been COVID now for two years. That's been the next easy media cycle. And then they're just slowly, slowly just ushering in the new one. That's why I know this shit's starting to end. Is we got the whole Russia, Ukraine, World War Three drama. That's all coming around. And do I think something's eventually going to pop off? Yes. Because we're currently living in the most peaceful worldwide time in the history of the world. And I've read a book on that, so I can say that with certainty. From 1944, 45, when the shit ended, 46, well, just just to make sure I'm good, right? To, what are we, 2022 now? Close to 80 years. And there hasn't been any worldwide conflict go on. Like, true world war yeah there's been we went to korea we went there the slavic areas they've had their own shit but never when it's been like yo we're teaming up with them we're the blue team we're the green team and then someone's like "Eh, we're not on a team that shit hasn't happened and you look throughout history i am a historian at the end of the day incredibly educated Shit hasn't happened. So is some shit going to eventually pop off? Yes. Is it going to be in the next two years? Probably no. Is the news going to say that it's going to happen every day for the next two years? Probably yes. I've I've talked with a couple Russian friends that I have, and I asked, you know, like, what's what's the news like in Russia right now? Because here in Finland, we get the idea that Oh, they're, they're, they're at the border. They're at the gates. In the U.S., it's probably even crazier of a propaganda machine than it is here. As saying, I mean, we get so much crazy shit going on with Russia between the collusion and the politics and the election, which, from what I've read, it came out that Hillary hired someone to set all that up and make it look a certain way but no rogan said the n-word 17 times in 2020 or 2012 
Fuck, we don't care about Hillary and the election of the free world. Rogan made a bad joke 10 years ago. Get your head fucking screwed on right, man. So that's that's how I know it's coming to an end, though, because we're just slowly pushing in World War Three propaganda. So, I, oh yeah, but I asked I asked my Russian buddies, what how how is it there? And they said, well, I don't know. I have a lot of Ukrainian friends, and it it doesn't sound like anything's gonna happen. Both from both sides think that. Yeah, there's always kind of this little drama thing going on. I don't think Ukrainians can come into Russia right now. Yeah, but it's it's nothing major. And again, that's anecdotal evidence. But anecdotal evidence, in my opinion, is much better than media evidence. So... You you just would think that the people from the country that it's being talked about would know. And the Ukraine president has come out and said, yeah, we're like not worried about everything going on. There's nothing to worry about. Meanwhile, headlines in the States are always like, Russia is about to invade. There's like some funny Twitter journalist or something that's like literally said the same tweet saying i predict russia's gonna uh invade in the next five hours and he's posted it like 18 different times and i think he's posted it like two times 18 18 is like my go-to number when i want to exaggerate something eight or 18 or anything with eight 800 you know that's that's kind of my go-to. Is he said it like eighteen times, bro? Nah, he really said it three, but eighteen sounds good, you know. It's like oddly specific. Eighteen, it it's only two syllables. Nineteen is two twenty. Yeah, eighteen just sounds good. All right, all right. Well, I I guess I I went serious to start. Although I, I think I sprinkled a little bit of comedy in there. I, I don't know. I The more I, well, the more I just listen to podcasts of comedians, which is a lot, especially while I'm playing Pokemon, it does kind of make me want to try to be a comedian at some point. And then with the, the success, quote unquote success, God, this is, sounds terrible of some of the TikTok clips that I have talking about Finnish things is like, I found that niche and that niche is, it's easy now at this point. I mean, I I feel that some of my, my observations are unique to myself, but at least the way to package them, I've figured it out. And so like some of those, I almost think, you know, almost in a way, Every little clip that I make could be made into a joke. And so I know, I think I could be a stand-up comedian here in Finland. So, I don't know. But uh, it's like watching and listening to some of those comedian podcasts is like even trying to talk about this serious topics, but make it in a little bit more of a comical sense. You know, Tim Dillon does a really good job of that. I don't, I'm just going to give recommendations for people that already have a million people a week listening to them. But Tim Dillon is fucking great at being like informed yet comical. You know, Theo Vaughn, I talked about before, he, he doesn't dabble so much into current affairs too much, but he hits it in his own way. I got back, Dalia's back after being canceled. And it was so funny to listen to Dalia talk about Rogan. And say, like, it's just cool that, like, all the comedians defended him and stood up for him in a time of need. And it was, like, such a little, like, slight at literally every single one of his quote-unquote comedian friends. Or comedian quote-unquote friends. Because when it came out that he was talking to 18 and 20-year-old girls... 
all his friends that their next episode on every single podcast was, I didn't know. I mean, we're friends, but we're not that big of friends. I had no idea. You know, that's Hollywood's just so fake in that sense. That whole little like crew. Like, I mean, it it just, they're entertainers. I don't want to, I don't, that's what they do. Like they're, they're comedians. They talk shit. They, it's, it's to a degree, it's an act. They're acting as themselves. But. You know, when they, these guys act like they're best friends on a podcast. I'm sure they're friends to a degree, but some of them, it's a fucking act that pays the bills. What else we got? What else we got here? Mm, okay, yeah. This is a random thought, but I just switched gyms to this new, really nice gym, actually. And before I was going to this kind of like swimming hall, it was a really nice swimming hall that also had a gym. And so while this new gym doesn't have the pool and doesn't have as nice of a sauna or a cold tub and that kind of things, the actual gym itself is much, much better. And on top of that, the people that go to this gym are going to the gym to go to the gym. Whereas before, as I've said with different gym rants, a lot of the people at this like swimming hall that were then working out were full of shit and just getting in the way. And the thing I had forgotten about and didn't remember, but like, dude, gym girls, forgot about them. And it's just a nice, it's just nice to have some scenery while you're working out. And dude, I'm telling you, if a girl has on like a cool gym fit, some cool leggings and a nice top or whatever. Dude, she's hot. Like, it's just like a bonus two points. Like girls that aren't hot. They throw on like some light purple leggings and a top that kind of matches it. They're hot. I didn't I didn't realize that. I'd forgotten about that. I was like, oh shit. Okay. Well, okay. It's like, what? I wonder if that works for guys too. I do have a I'll have a like a generic finish gym bro observation coming up. I'm still doing research on that though. But, dude, I don't, like, girls just don't understand how much power they really have. They want oh, equality, uh, which I think for a majority of the first world they have, you know. But the power is is unreal. If I'm finishing up my workout and a hot girl comes into whatever little area that I'm doing my my workout I'm going to find two more sets of something to do and, and I have no intention of talking to her I have no intention I'm not even really looking that much I'm looking a little But, like, you you don't know how... I mean, that's powerful. I was going to leave. And now I'm here. (laughs) But, yeah, this the new gym's good. New gym's nice. Although, I have to say... 
Oh, this is another thing of how I know I'm becoming more and more Finnish is the sauna at the new gym. Not that good. Not that good. Making a little judgments about the sauna. And I, it's crazy to me how much of a sauna guy I have become in a year. Because when I first moved here, I I wouldn't say I was anti-sauna, but I was not pro-sauna at all. You know, same way, like, I wouldn't say I'm anti-vax, but I'm not pro-vax either. <laughs> that was my feelings of towards sauna. It's like, eh, if you want to do it, <laughs> do it. I, I don't want to do it. I'm good on that. I don't need to feel... Like I'm sitting next to the sun. But if you want to do that, go for it. I don't really like being overly hot. But boy, now, to go with that analogy, I am boosted. I'm living in Israel. I got four shots. Because I am a sauna guy now. And now I'm to the point where It's hard for me to make the sauna get hot enough. I'll be sitting in there and I'm like, dude, it's too fucking cold in here. I look up at the temperature thing and it's like 89 degrees Celsius, which I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit times two. Can that even be right? Times two plus 32. So let's say 90. That can't be right. 90 degrees Celsius times 2 would be 180 plus 32 would be 210, 212. You can't survive in that, can you? Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, it gets to the point where I'm like, no, not hot enough. Not hot enough. And then I also, with this new sauna at the new gym... I have had to graduate and I got a new Boy Scout badge. How do I say it? I got a new Finnish Boy Scout badge this week where in the sauna, I have never had to be the guy that does the water. But here at this new sauna, when I go in there alone, I had to do that. And there's an art to that. There, it's, it's, it's not just as easy as you think it is. And there's so much power because then I'll be in there, I'll start in there alone. So I'm the water guy and then someone else will come in. Now it's my responsibility to make this sauna right. And I have to pretend I know what I'm doing. Yeah, scoop up the water, throw it. You know, every now and then I'll fucking throw it, fucking miss the thing completely, or it gets like three drops on it. The water splashes against the wall. Oh, fucking bad spoon, you know, bad spoon. Like that's that's a that's like a a next level of finishness that I've reached, where you feel like a, a little bit more of a man. I got the, I'll, I'll do the sauna. Yeah. Uh, uh, ho, ho. So, yeah. Huh. What's the other thing? Oh, other thing this week. I'm stoked for tomorrow, Sunday, because the next episode of the Kanye de- documentary comes out. Dude. Stop this podcast right now and go watch the first episode of the Kanye documentary. Bro. So fucking good. Oh my God. And like, I've, I've always been a, I mean, I wouldn't say I've always been a big Kanye fan, but I've, I've always enjoyed him. Especially now. I don't think he's like that crazy. I'm sure he has some mental shit going on, but I don't think most people or 
hardly anyone in the world can understand and the amount of like insanity that being in that position that he is in brings him. And trust me, he brings some of that shit upon himself. Like getting with Kim Kardashian, bro, she must have the best pussy in the world. Like she has to. Because it's essentially you trade that pussy for a mental condition almost. Or just not even a mental condition. Like, you know, yeah, your life might be okay for a little, but eventually your life is going to suck. You know, I mean, just all the, uh, pretty much all of the Kardashians is that way. Kim's just the queen on that little scale. But fucking with any of the Kardashians for the most part, like, you just know, well, antidepressants are in my future. Like, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying I'd tell her no, but fuck, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I mean, just think, who's, who's she been with? I hate that I even know this shit. Kanye? I mean, Ray J got her on the map. I don't, I wonder how Ray J's doing nowadays. He might be all right, because when hit shit, Ray J made her the star. Most of everyone else, she makes them the star. Ray J made her the star. So maybe Ray J is immune to this. Blake Griffin? Is that right? I don't know. Oh, no. Chris Humphreys. Other white-looking black dude in that NBA. Is Chris Humphreys white? I don't know. Chris Humphrey, who know Lamar Odom? I know he didn't fuck with Kim, but he fucked with the other one. Who else? I mean, whoever it is, who whatever name I would say, even though I don't know what the fucking names are, they're probably doing worse than when they started seeing them. So, like I said, she must have the bombest pussy in the fucking world, bro. Because especially at this point, like for Kanye to know the track record and then to still fuck with it. Like I said, you just, you just are cool with taking antidepressants for the rest of your life at that point. And so anyway, I tangent on a tangent. Holy smokes. The Kanye documentary is sick, bro. And it's so cool because the dude who, Filmed it and directed it and all that stuff is this guy named Cootie. Who was a stand-up comedian back in early 2000s. The film and stuff, they've been filming it for like 20 years. 22 years, 25 years. So, I mean, they got film of him walking through the Source Awards or some award show. Destiny's Child's in there. You know, this was when Jay-Z was popping the blueprint. Yeah, that's 01. I mean, the film, to be able to see some of that stuff is so fucking cool. Because it wasn't like it is now where people film everything anyway. And you get to have those little inside looks of backstage and all that stuff. Is Nobody was doing that shit. And so this dude, it's been, man. I have a lot of thoughts going on. I'm trying to figure out how to say them. It's cool because Kanye has been Kanye since day one. And he's believed in himself more than anyone, except maybe his mom, which was a really cool part of the thing to see of their relationship. But it's been cool to see, like, he knew he was going to get to the level that he's at now. That ain't no surprise at all for him. So it was like, it's cool to see that thing evolve on a self-confidence level but to me the most cool thing about it and maybe it's because I relate to it from like a filming editing type of way I mm, while part of me feels like I'm the star I've also like in the past always felt like I was gonna help someone else be the star and seeing the potential in somebody else and sticking with them and and helping them out in that way and so I relate really I relate more to 
Cootie, the filmer guy, than I do Kanye, in a sense. That's an interesting revelation, actually. Because this Cootie dude was a, a comedian. He had his own little career kind of TV show, hot talk show, talk host show going. And he knew Kanye barely. And he was like, yo, like Kanye's going to be that dude. I'm going to start filming shit. And he literally went from the guy who was in front of the camera to being the guy that's always behind the camera and behind the scenes. And so, I mean, that takes an incredible amount of humbleness. Humility, that's the word, humbleness, humbleness. That takes an incredible amount of humility. And just the vision to see it and to trust it and to stop everything you're doing in your life to go and maybe it'll work out. But it's like, I have this saying, and I don't know if it's, it's not my own. I, I've got it from somewhere. But it's, you know, the leader is really important in anything you do. But more important than a leader sometimes is the first follower. Because it's that first follower that then can make everyone else buy in and believe. You can have a leader with the best ideas in the world and all uh, charismatic, all these things. But until he gets a first follower that's just as committed and believes in whatever he's preaching as much as he does, it's going to be tough for everyone else to buy in. Because as we've seen, we're tribal type of human creatures. So we like being and following somebody else for the most part and oh well he like the story stuff and still please post the stories i know i'm saying this 50 minutes into the episode but post the stories because that shit works bro people see that shit and they think oh well that person liked it well maybe i'll like it too and then they look at my thing and i have seven eight nine ten of the stories of people posting it and they say, well, he liked it, and he liked it, and he liked it. Now, I'm the one who's left out. I'm the only one who isn't a part of this. And I don't want to be left out. And so that first follower, man, is is just as, if not more important than the leader. And so thank you to everybody out there, because like, there's a group of, like, I don't know, 30 people probably right now. And there's probably even a smaller group too that y'all are the first followers. And man, yo, maybe this shit don't do nothing. Maybe it does. And so while it'll be cool for me if let's say it blows up at a certain point, now I'm getting narcissistic, now I'm getting into that Kanye. Uh. Let's say it does blow up. It'll be cool for me. I mean, I am, I'm not Kanye in that sense because I'm saying if it does. And Kanye was just saying when it does. So maybe I need to change my thought process too. So when it blows up, it'll be cool for me to say, yeah, like I knew I was doing something dope this whole time, even if no one else saw it in me and saw it in whatever the fuck I was doing. Bro, it's going to be almost cooler for you as the person who's like, yeah, I knew this shit was dope. And I'd fucked with them since episode whatever. Because I don't know. Well, I don't know. I was going to say it's easy to believe in yourself. It's harder to believe in somebody else. But I don't know if that's necessarily true. For myself. I mean, I don't know. That's a good one. I didn't I didn't have many therapy therapeutic type shit written down for this one, but it just kinda came up. I've I've always believed in myself, I guess, more than other I've felt others did, though. I will say that. Especially talking about football. 
like throughout entire life, like besides my dad, my dad believed in me, but besides that, not one coach ever fucking really believed in me. They might've believed into me because believed in me because they had to, because they didn't have another option for that year. But big picture, no. And so I guess when you're passionate about something, it's much easier to believe in yourself than it is to believe in others. But then I know in other times, I don't know. Shit, I don't know where I'm going with that one. I'm going to I'm gonna have to let that one marinate. We'll, we'll get back to that one. All right, changing gears, moving forward, switching it up. The this last week, a couple funny little encounters. A couple nice nice things that going on and first and foremost, I had the ultimate thrift shopping day ever. I mean, dude, ever it's it's there's this thrift shop here in Quopio that's essentially I don't know how to even explain it. We don't have the same type of setup in the states. But instead of like you selling your shit to the store or just giving it to the store like Goodwill and some of those places, you pay for you like rent out a little space. It's like a flea market, really. Truly it is a flea market. You rent a little space And so you have like your own mini store in the store. And so the store is just full of a bunch of mini stores. So it's, it's nice in one way because it's all kinds of shit from all over. It sucks in another way because uh, you got to look through every single one. There's no men's section. There's no shoes section. There's no home appliance section. Like at a at a at a true like thrift shop, not a flea market. Yeah, it is a flea market, really. And so you got to look through every single thing. But I had a day, boy. I mean, I don't know if I can ever. I've I've had some good some good days. Uh, you know, a couple of my jackets that I have are from flea markets or thrift shops. But this, these two items that I got this last week, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to top it, especially for the money. And first, I, I, got them, I got them ready and queued. First, I got some brand new Adidas Young One in like the gray, cream, and white. And man, thank you, universe, because I was... Uh, I needed, I haven't bought a new pair of shoes in hell along. And I was just thinking, I could really like go for a new pair of shoes. And I had these new balances that were all white with like a little bit of gray in them that 19, they're new balance 1987s. I looked them up and they're actually like really hard to find now. I got them at Ross, which is like a, a thrift shop for rich people in the States. Um, and I got, I was like, damn, I really wish I had some shoes like that right now. Even though I can't wear these for another fucking three months here. Cause it snows every goddamn day. But, um, and then I go into the store and I don't know who has this little shelf at the store here in Quopio, but somebody there is either stealing some shoes from Foot Locker every week or, they work at the shoe shop. I don't know because last three times I've gone in there, at like every third week, which I should, I got to go today to double check. This one shelf has a brand new pair of Adidas size 12 in the box on the shelf. And like two, three weeks ago, it was like the black, red, and blue NMDs, I think. And they were 60 and those are originally like 120 130 in the store like right now and they were brand new 
I got these. These go in the store right now online for like 100, 110. I got these for 35. Then the the find that'll really excite the Finnish people and confuse my American friends because we don't fuck with this brand. Oh, maybe we do. I don't know. I haven't been to the States in like three years. Is I got this Fallia Raven. I don't know how to fucking say this. Fjall Raven. Backpack. Little backpack. Which I learned last night can hold eight beer cans. Don't ask me how I know. I got this for 20 euro. Which my American friends are probably like, dude, you paid 20 euros for that little shitty backpack? Yeah, I did. Because I've kind of hated on this brand for the most part because their shit is so fucking overpriced. Because this thing would normally be 75 or 80 euros. And it's pretty much brand new. Which 75 or 80 euros for that? Go jump off a bridge. But 20 euros for that, especially when I get to rock it and have motherfuckers think like, damn, that dude is balling. And so I was in the store. I had that in my cart. And this this old lady was like, oh, I was going to get that. That's such a good deal. It's kind of expensive for this store. but And I was like, yeah, but it's cheap for what it is. She's like, oh, I know. No, that's a really good find. It's like, yeah, you see me. You see me, Grandma. She wasn't that old. She was actually with her daughter. And her daughter was like, oh, that's, oh, I really like that too. I was like, yeah, you see me. So that's my new kind of guilty pleasure. I've always been a, I've been a thrift shop guy. You know, I'm from Seattle. I'm from the home of Macklemore. Do it, do it. Do, 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 what? That's the thrift shop song, in case you didn't know. I'm gonna pop some tags. Only got $20 in my pocket. Yeah, so anyway, I got those shoes and backpack for a combined total of 55 euro. And I couldn't have been happier about it. That was... But I'm, I'm now I have to weekly go check out that one shelf because I have a feeling there's going to be another brand new pair of Adidas size 12 there. And to get size 12 here in Europe is super rare because I don't know what, I don't know if it's the GMOs that we got in our food back home. I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. Motherfuckers out here ain't got big feet. So finding a size 46 in Europe can be a little difficult. And you know what they say about big feet, right? <laughs> oh, God. At least I think I'm funny. What else? What else? What else? What else happened this week? Oh, yeah. I went to Little, my favorite grocery store. I mean, hands down, Little's the best grocery store. There's no no question about it. I've talked about this before. And I was going through the line, cashier checking out, and the guy hit me with a, hey, I'm sorry, but are you the guy from TikTok? <laughs> I said, yeah, I am, bro. I'm Joey. Nice to meet you. And I haven't gotten that very often because normally I only get recognized by blackout drunk 22 year old dudes at the bar and so the bars have been closed for the last two months so and then I'd been out of Finland for the last three months before everything being closed the last two months so I hadn't ever got I was kind of getting used to it last year going out every weekend getting it but then I hadn't got it in I don't know six seven eight months I kind of forgot about it even though I know, you know, like sometimes I can see people recognizing me 
and like looking at me in public and maybe I'm just being narcissistic and self-conscious, which is definite a possibility. And so, it, but, or, but I know it happens because then I'll get a fucking comment on TikTok like, well, I saw you at the supermarket. Oh, I saw you here. I saw you there. It's like, okay, cool. How about you just say hi rather than looking at me and then pretending you're not looking at me. So anyway, I had forgotten that that shit happened. And so I got to leave Little feeling like a fucking movie star, my guy. And then because the bars were open last night while I was walking to go get beer at the store, I turned the corner and it was on the same fucking corner that the random guy said moy to me last week. Oh, this is the stranger corner now. Exact same corner. Exact same place as last week. I turn the corner. I walk by a guy. And this dude, not an old guy, probably younger than me, he gave me this like weird little cap salute. And I thought, what the fuck? Like, is he... And it was only like 9.30 p.m. So it's not like he could have been that fucked up at that point. Well, maybe. I don't know. He wasn't coming out of L.A. Pooby, so he wasn't a professional. I don't know. But I I kind of like saw it late, and so I didn't really acknowledge it. I was kind of just like, uh, maybe gave him a head nod or like an eyebrow raise. You know, for guys, if if guy, it's guy code. If you're passing another guy and you don't know them, you give them the down nod. If you're passing them and you do know them, you give them the up nod. I'm pretty sure I gave this dude the down nod. I'll normally, I'll give a stranger an up nod sometimes because that's, I'm a friendly guy. I'll I'll throw him a, what's up, bro? Well, what's up, bro? The down, down nod's more like, hey, you know, like when I saw that dude last week, he gave me the moi, I gave him a moi little down nod moy. I didn't give him a moy. I gave him a moy. So I, I think I gave this guy a little, just, just a down nod. Just a, I, cause I, the whole little cap salute threw me off. And then he's about to turn the corner, the stranger corner. And he looked back and he went, dude. And so I turned around I said, what's up, bro? And he was just like, and kept it moving. So I know that that guy knows me from this shit of TikTok, but he like didn't want to say it or I don't know. So to the mysterious cap tipper, what up, bro? Say hi next time. Although that gave me a great little story to tell. That was funny. I was I laughed about it the whole rest of my walk. That was great. All right. To close out, I saved this one for the very end because it's very Quopio specific. But in honor of the bars opening back up soon, I thought we would do a little series that happens all over social media called What Your Favorite Quopio Bar Says About You. And I got a few of them written down here. I think, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do that. But we'll start with Ale Poopy. Ale Poopy, if Ale Poopy is your favorite bar, You are a professional, you like sports, and you're probably broke. Jolene, you're either over 40 and or have given up on life. One of my friends here said, Jolene is where hopes and dreams go to die. 
And I've gone in there one time. No, I've gone in there like two times, three times. That was the first bar I was going to go to in Quopio. I took two steps in and the vibe was just like, ah, no. And I turned right around. Next is intro. You're fancy. You got a little bit of money. But you're probably really fun to drink with. Hop house across the street is you're either a foreigner or you're very pretentious. You're not fun to drink with at all. And you probably take yourself way too seriously. If you go to Nosu, you're either in college or you pretend and wish you were still in college. Or you have a job where you work on the weekends. And so you like to get it popping on a Tuesday or a Wednesday because everyone knows that that's where you go during the week. Or... You're unemployed, and that's why you're drinking during the week and trying to party during the week. Just to the unemployed crew, be careful, because if you're not careful, your next stop then will be Jolene. Next, we got Lasku, which is the new one. If Lasku is your favorite bar, you're either from Helsinki or you wish you were from Helsinki. You were probably born in the 90s. And you're one of the few Finns who has a little bit of rhythm when they dance and will dance before they actually get blacked out drunk where you don't even need music to dance to. Uh, Autopoika. You're also a professional, but unlike Ale Pubi, which is kind of more a sports-minded professional, you're a metalhead-minded professional. You have a hard exterior, probably piercings, tattoos, leather jacket, all those things. You look like a badass. You probably are a badass. But on the inside, you're really soft, sensitive, and sweet. Autopoika is probably the place at the end of the night where you'll hear the most amount of I love you bros and hugs. Then followed by a fight. Malia. Malia, you're in your 30s. You're a professional that doesn't like sports isn't a metalhead, doesn't really need music. You're just going to drink and have a conversation. Kalakoko, Kalakuku. This one doesn't even really deserve to be on the list. The only reason you're going there is if you're under 20, and so you're probably an idiot. Beater's Tube. You're a professional, but you're also hungry. Once you have your wings, your next stop is probably Ale Poopy. Abtekari. You're in college or you just graduated. You're probably pretty attractive, but you're also incredibly self-conscious. You spend most of your night just looking around and judging other people. And most likely you're paying with your parents' money, but pretending it's yours and saying how independent you are and a grown-ass man you are. Aptekari is like the coolest venue that I never have fun at. Although, shout out to my boy Kimo, doorman. That's my guy. And the other bald dude, he's cool too. I like all the people that work there. But it's like, it has the coolest interior. Coolest rooftop bar. Has a cool little middle section club area. And just for whatever reason, it's never that much fun. Albatrossi. You're just there for a good time. You don't care about what anyone else thinks you don't really care about how the place looks because it's probably one of the ugliest places i've seen on the inside you're just there to have fun opposite of aptekari albatrossi is literally the uncoolest looking place i've ever been to that i have the most amount of fun in so that's just an interesting little thing shout out to my guy mr manners that's the doorman there you got to know the doorman. Treat the doorman nice, bro. That's that should be rule number 1. If I was a if I was an older guy like I might just be now and I had advice to the young 20-year-olds is don't be a fucking asshole to the doorman. 
or the bar people, but especially the doorman. Because they are the gatekeepers, literally. Uh, Oh, one thing I forgot. I'm literally the neighbor whisperer here at my new apartment. I have now met my next door neighbor. I've met everybody on the floor. On my, yeah, yeah, I've met everybody on my floor. The next door neighbor, the sweet old lady. The guy right next to me on the other side. I guess I haven't like officially met him, but I forgot my keys one day. And so I had to buzz in and he opened the door for me. And then there's another old couple that lives on my floor that has a dog that really wants to be my friend. I, I've I've bonded more with the dog than I have the old people. They're very traditional finish of like, oh, all right, shut the door. But then I've even met now another lady. I met Kaisa while I was smoking a cigarette one day. We were both by the little ashtray area. And we ended up seeing each other like three times randomly that day. And now it's just a nice little hello and smile. But yeah, it was funny. <laughs> we were smoking the cigarette together and she said something to me in Finnish. I did this typical, I'm sorry, I don't speak Finnish. Oh, well, it's snowing a lot. Go to weather, small talk. I said, oh yeah, I know it won't fucking stop. Blah, blah, blah. We did the, where are you from? How long you lived here? Where do you work thing? We got that out. And then as soon as her cigarette was finished, It got put out and just straight back inside. No goodbye. No nothing. What do you expect? (laughs) So that was nice. That was nice. But all righty. I think that covers it for this week. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your attention. Check out the store. Tell a friend, post it on the story, please. Thank you. Comment on YouTube. It all means a lot. I appreciate you. Until next time, peace and much love. Holla!